This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to Digital Perspectives, everybody. I'm Brad Kimes. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley and everything that we're talking about here today. I want to start with this article and shout out to Michael Val Five Links, uh, who sent this over. And you know, I, I just want to touch base on it because we got to be careful. You know, I I mean, we all know that all the crypto YouTubers have been riddled with uh, scam ads. We have seen uh, a hack on Twitter, and now we're seeing an email hack with ledger and i just want to make a note of it and uh shout out to michael five Lang five val five links for this information and uh by the way we are going to discuss today before we get started we are going to discuss today some massive information breaking information that is really showing us that the door to mass adoption is kicking wide open here and this is again not just here in the u.s this is a global effort, ladies and gentlemen, and you are going to see that evidence today before we finish this video. Real quick, so Ledger had a hack, and it was an email hack to close to a million customers, and this is why I want to tell you about this right now. I have added this as a layer to my protection. Okay, I want to try to keep my anonymity and hide my VPN address. VPN, purevpn.com, guys. I have a link in the description, and it is very comforting to know that I have the VPN service that is helping protect my anonymity on the Internet. Listen to this. Blind hackers from peeking into your data, ISPs from prying on your browser history, and pesky advertisers from tracking you. Download with no fear of anything. Download or see private files on the Internet via P2P clients file sharing websites in completely anonymous manner. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I have other layers of security as well, but this is one that has made me feel very, very comfortable and a lot better knowing that this industry is changing drastically very quickly. And not too long from now, there's going to be a reason why you're going to want to have many different layers of security to protect you and your investments. Check out PureVPN in the description box. Now, here is an interview from none other than Mr. BXRP, guys, this is an incredible interview with the CEO, J.P. Theriot, from Uphold. It is fantastic. What I want to focus on, because this whole interview is fantastic, go like and subscribe everything by Mr. B and watch it all because it's really fantastic. His work is absolutely stellar. Now, let's go into this video here at about 8.49, almost nine minutes, and he asks him a question that takes on a tax uh, um uh, he addresses taxes and listen to what he says about what you can do currently now on the uphold platform which i have you guys know i've been a fan of i have many friends and family that i have cards for because that's one of the beautiful things about uphold is you can literally create personal cards for each person or family member in your uphold account and i absolutely love that as well as the fact that you can get a lot of different products aside from crypto on there Let's listen to this about taxes, and you won't believe what J.P. Theriot says about the future of this platform. Watch this. You have a very unique platform, which I absolutely love, because you can be in metals, you can be in cryptocurrencies, you can be in, in, in different fiat currencies, you can be in so many things, and soon to be in U.S. equities. Um, one, of the, one of the concerns that in people that I talk to who are invested in, especially in cryptocurrencies, is they get in and out of assets or early in their experience with cryptocurrencies, they pop in and out of assets and then they get worried about they're gonna get in trouble with the IRS. How, how, could, you, how could you recommend that people w using your platform help stay out of trouble with the IRS? Do you have, do you have um, uh, any systems in place where they can download or is there anything, so what, what would you recommend? Well, so, I, so I'm, a, I'm a poster child for this, right? Uh, when we were starting um, uh, Uphold, Bet, which was then BitReserve back in 2013, I was using Coinbase and Mt. Gox and, and all these, these different things. And then later on, as, a, as a, the CEO of a crypto company, I got the famous letter from you know, the IRS, uh, show us what you've done. And I thought, oh, Jesus, you know, how am I going to go back? 
seven years and, and do all this stuff. And right at the time we were doing a deal with a company called Taxbit. And so I became sort of a, a test client for Taxbit. And, and I thought what they did was almost miraculous, right? I, I basically fed them some, you know, old account numbers and, and very little, you know, information and wham, absolutely, you know, every, you know, profit and loss on every trade going back seven years, perfectly organized. They took care of the letter that, that needed to accompany the, you know, the accounting as it were. It was soup to nuts service and it, it happened immediately. And, you know, I, I don't know, it was 50 bucks or wow. something. So That's amazing. Amazing. amazing yeah. Yeah, so so I guess they, they plug into the I, the uh, APIs of the different uh, exchanges, and then it just puts together all the information is what I've heard. Now, this is amazing. Listen to what he says, because JP goes into what it's going to look like in the future. It's amazing. Well, yeah, so so we've partnered with them. And now if you're a U.S. Uh, citizen on, on uh, Uphold, which is obviously the only people for whom the IRS is relevant, um, then it's doing everything... In an, in an entirely automated way. You don't need to worry wow. about a bloody, bloody thing. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, and, All right. and it'll, it'll get cooler actually, because the next step with Taxbit will be, if you want, we've got a debit card, right? And the debit card allows you to spend anything. So if you're approaching the end of the year and I don't know, you need to take losses or you want to uh, fix some gains or whatever your tax strategy is, you can sort of set the dials and you'll be advised, hey, you're about to use your debit card, spend your ETH and take the loss, you know, to uh, offset uh. Your, your gains in, in BTC before it's too late three days from now sort of a thing. So it'll be- a Whoa, are you hearing this? That is remarkable. You can dial it in and set it to things and parameters you want it to so it can actually advise you day to day on what you're best to do i gotta be honest uphold is putting it over the fence ladies and gentlemen and out in the parking lot that is fantastic look there's a lot more that i could play you in this interview and i may grab some clips and other videos but until then go check out the video and the interview with uh mr bxrp and jp theriot from uphold it is terrific and there's a reason here by the end of the video you're going to find out why i chose to highlight the tax particular uh, portion of this interview. Let's keep moving. And before we do, let me just say that I am very pleased to say, guys, you guys have, have pushed us over 20,000 subscribers on this channel. We've crossed 20,000 subscribers. I tell you, it is quite a moment for us here on the channel. And I want to take a second and just tell each and every one of you that I'm extremely grateful for all of you and your time to come here and to, to uh, listen to this content. So thank you to each and every one of you. Let's keep this thing going. We are just getting started. And so is this market, as we're about to find out. Okay, so here I covered this morning pretty in-depth uh, the interview with uh, Aaron Klein and Brian Brooks. Aaron Klein from Brookings Institute. Brian Brooks, obviously, from the OCC. What I want to focus on here is the very last thing that was said. I actually watched this whole video and forgot to include this last couple minutes in the morning video, but it's just as well because it sets up the content for this particular topic today. And shout out to I Am Legion, who actually, I believe I saw this, and it reminded me after I watched the video, and I was like, oh, wow, I totally forgot to add that in. So uh, shout out to I Am Legion for everything he does. We're going to take a look at some stuff he's shared with us, too. Uh, let's listen to this exchange here. Uh, Aaron Klein lays this out. It starts off about the stimulus, but it quickly moves into a question about if he gets to head the OCC for a five-year term, what would that look like? Uh, it's very key to what that's going to set up because we're going to discuss some information here about stable coins and, and the impact on that and Ripple and Ethereum. It is very, very important what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start with this clip. The payments, the Treasury Department gave the instruction the money was coming to and how much to each bank on Good Friday. This was in the first round of direct deposits, the fastest people got money. And it didn't show up available into people's accounts until Wednesday. You know, if you were in charge or you, the, the 
uh, the president or the secretary of treasury was going to ask you, you know, should we make these funds immediately available to people? Should, you know, the, the expedited funds availability act, it's not in your jurisdiction, it's not in your control, but it says that you can sit on treasury funds uh, for a little while, both checks from the treasury department, which millions of people, tens of millions of people got uh, months later, as well as governing some of the time availability on direct deposits. Congress can change that law. It would seem to satisfy the president's objective. Do you think it would be a good thing for America and for the banking system for people to get their next round of stimulus faster? Yeah, it, it, no, no question, Aaron, no, no question. I mean, I mean, if I had a voice on this and my voice here is just the same as yours or anybody else's, but as a citizen, absolutely. As a regulator, the question is, how do you do that? And the answer is, you know, we, we don't have a Fed, you know, Fed now does not yet exist except on paper. There, there is, as you say, the ACH upgrade that would allow something faster. That would be a good thing. There are also existing private sector blockchain technologies on smart contracts where one can simply program the stuff and hit, hit the automate button and it would instantly appear to everybody who's connected on that network. Technology is the answer here. We have been slower than any other major country to embrace technology. We unfortunately are the victim of our own success 100 years ago. 100 years ago, we had the most advanced financial system in the world, and we still have the most advanced financial system circa 1910. That's our problem is we're building on top of old rails and old systems. We need to just start over. And, and that's what I'm trying to embrace here. Well, we appreciate your new thinking. You know, the, the, some banks did make the money available on Friday, on Good Friday. Uh, they all could have. They all should have. Congress can require that in this new law. I'm glad to hear that you add your voice to the echo chamber of people that think that that would be a good idea. Uh, and I really want to thank you for, for your time and thoughts on this. I want to close by asking you, you know, if you look back at the end of your tenure, as comptroller of the currency, and you're able to accomplish your goal in payments, what does that look like? I, I, I think if, if I had a five-year term as comptroller, um, I, I think it looks like two things. One is there is a national platform for payments companies out there that don't have to deal with patchwork state laws and all of that, okay? That's the first thing. That brings everything into the supervisory framework. And the second thing we didn't talk that much about is- That brings everything into the supervisory framework. I'm a believer in decentralization. I think at the end of the day, I think that stable coins and other kind of blockchain based tokenization of dollars are the most resilient model, you know, for long term faster payments better than a central bank monopoly on the payment system. And, you know, nodes on networks tend to be much more uh, fail safe and resilient than centralized administration. So those two things, I think would be a big success. Well, I nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Listen, uh, you know, Let's take a look at some more information, and I've got some thoughts I want to share here at the end. Uh, th so that was the U.S.'s effort where we are. It's, it's a recognition that there is an old system circa 1910, he says. And he's obviously interested in getting this up to date as fast as possible. That's the U.S. stance. Well, let's take a look at what's going on at the Bank of England. We'll work with Accenture to develop and build this new world-class payment service. Well, Accenture is partnered with Ripple. This is amazing. Shout out to Michael Val Five Links. Follow him and follow I Am Legion because here it is. It's been Swift and Ripple's plan all along. Work stated, started the same day as the Sweden CBDC and the digital dollar. It started with Accenture's help. Take a look at these pictures that he's put up here for us. Shout out to I Am Legion. Swift and Accenture outline path to distributed ledger technology adoption within financial services. SWIFT completes on March 18, uh, landmark DLT proof of concept. Proof of concept is one of the most extensive Hyperledger Fabric 1.0 implementations executed in the industry to date. January 30th, 2019, SWIFT to bring benefits of GPI to DLT and trade ecosystems. Initial proof of concept to connect GPI uh, block with blockchain enterprise software firm R3. Boom. Now, here's some other great news. Remember, this is a global effort. The stable coins, CBDCs being created around the world. Well, take a look at this. BVCI, 
launches a new Canadian stable coin with the support of Concentra Trust. Well, this is important. Why is it important? Well, I'll tell you why. And shout out to DJ Peter Vass, who sent this to me and put it right over the fence. Only four months after the launch, this is from 2019, just as a reminder of the connections here. At the launch of CATD, stablecoin last Canada Day, BVCI has officially launched another stablecoin, CUSD, with the value anchored to U.S. dollar. The CUSD stablecoin is expected to be used globally by both individuals and businesses alike, especially for Canada and America cross-border trades. CUSD, like its forerunner, CATD, is developed exclusively by Blockchain Venture Capital Incorporated, BVCI. A can Canadian company incorporated according to the laws of Ontario, BVCI specializes in blockchain research and development. BVCI has developed a public decentralized blockchain, BVC chain, that combines, wait for it, the Ripple and Ethereum blockchains. Is this on? Hello? BVCI specializes in blockchain research and development. BVCI has developed a public decentralized blockchain that combines the Ripple and Ethereum blockchains. Come on in. You know, I have to say, you know, moments like this, times like this, I just, I guess the biggest thing that's sticking out for me at this point is that this truly is our time. It truly is. All the years that we have been invested in this space, I know some longer than others, but when you think of it, we've been in what, almost three years, three year bear market here. I want to remind people that not only is this your time, but the price is up right now. Banks are coming in, and it won't be long, probably another, you know, 60, 90 days or so, and we're going to start seeing those new offerings, the products, the services. People are looking for a bull run because I think that's been the past experience in this space. I remember the one in 2017, 2018, and it was something to see. But I have to say, with the news and information that we understand now today, it's not a bull run that I'm looking for. In fact, I think a bull run is short-sighted. What I'm looking for, what I expect to see, is a bull market. And I expect to see what I know is going to happen, truly I do believe, is the next dot-com era. But this is crypto. Crypto is in the threshold of the dot-com era. There's going to be an explosion of IPOs. The banks are coming into this sector and they are going to buy, acquire, merge, partner with exchanges and virtual asset service providers. And they are going to gobble up the upstarts in this space. Because in order to truly have a level playing field is exactly the way Brian Brooks said. You have to embrace the technology and you have to re-clarify that the regulation that is out here today encompasses the innovation and the tech and the fintech companies that are in this space. That is how you get to a level playing field. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. The doorway to mass adoption has been kicked open. I got to thank Dan Ski for the title on this one today. All right, guys, hit the like and subscribe, share with somebody you know. I'll catch you on the next one.